Hello everyone! This video describes how you can manage participants in Pencil Spaces. Once I've created a space and I've invited my participants, I can start a call as a host. Keep in mind that only the host can start a call in Pencil Spaces. The participants can only join once you've started it. So I'm going to set up my audio and video permissions and start the video call. Once I start the call, my participant can join me. And now Kiara has joined me in the video call. A good thing to keep in mind is that even though your participants cannot start a video call on their own, they can still access the space, the whiteboard, and all of its contents outside of a video call. So they can review things asynchronously, and by default, they have the ability to edit the whiteboard unless I restrict that capability outside of my video calls. Let's go over some of the other permissions that participants have access to by default. So to access the participant manager, I'm going to click the little people icon at the top right corner, right next to the blue share button. And you'll see that a control panel has opened up. The controls panel allows me to mute my participants or turn off their video. In addition, I can also request that my participants turn on their microphone or turn on their video. That will send a notification with a prompt for them to turn on their video and microphone. So now you can see that Kiara has responded to my request to turn on her video and she has turned it back on. You cannot force that another participant turns on their video or microphone. However, you can request it. The control panel also lists all of the participants that are actively in the space. You will see the microphone and video indicator if you are actively in a video call. On the permissions panel at the top, when I switch to that, you'll be able to see all of the permissions that you have the ability to change. Within the permissions panel, you could control a variety of different permissions related to video, whiteboard controls, chat controls, and the app list. At the top, within video controls, you could disable microphone, camera, or screen sharing. For whiteboard controls, you could disable or enable the ability to create new boards or edit the whiteboard. Within chat controls, you can disable the ability for participants to direct message each other. And for app controls, you could disable the ability for participants to insert any web viewers or apps. You could also configure permissions for individual participants. So for example, if I click the arrow button, I can see a list of all of my participants and control access for individual people. So once I deselect this and click update changes, you'll see that Kiara can no longer edit the whiteboard. However, my other participant, Ben, will be able to. If I want to re-enable the permission, I can just recheck the box and click update changes. Updating permissions for all participants is quite similar. You just have to click the checkbox and click update changes. Whenever you create a space, by default, your participants will not be able to create new boards and they will not be able to insert a web viewer. In addition to the permissions list that you see here, you could also access additional controls on the whiteboard. For example, if I add a shape on the whiteboard or an image or any other object, and I don't want my participants editing that object, I can select it and click lock. That way, it cannot be moved unless I unlock it as the host. You also have the option to lock an entire board. If I navigate to the three dots next to the board that I want to edit, I can click lock board so that I can no longer be edited by any of my participants. When boards are locked, I can still edit the board as a host, but my participants cannot get in the way then I can unlock the board at any time. In addition to locking individual whiteboards, I can also change who has access to specific boards. So if I click the three dots and click change access, I can make boards private for specific participants or for just myself as a host. So if I make this board private and only visible to me, Kiara will no longer have access to it and she will be redirected to the board that is visible to her. Now let's go over what it looks like from a student's perspective when specific permissions are turned off. So I'm going to go back to the permissions panel and 
For now, I'm going to turn off all of the video call controls. So I can click microphone, camera, and screen share, and click update changes. You'll see that Kiara's video turns off. From Kiara's perspective, the mute video and screen sharing buttons will be blurred out and cannot be turned on again. So I'm going to re-enable these controls and she'll be able to turn her video back on. And now she's back. With the whiteboard controls, if I click create boards, then Kiara will be able to create a new board on the whiteboard list. If I want to restrict editing within this space, I can click the lock button at the top left corner of my screen, or I can also disable it from the permissions panel and update changes. With the chat controls, if I disable the ability for Kiara to message other participants, when she opens the chat list, she will only be able to message everyone in the space or just me as the host. By default, the permission to insert web viewers will be disabled for participants. However, I can re-enable that so that my participant has the ability to insert a web viewer on the whiteboard. Aside from the permissions that you see in the participant manager, you also have a feature called leader mode, which is the crown icon at the top left corner, which centers your student's attention wherever you are. So essentially, if I turn leader mode on, that means that whatever is in this blue box will be exactly what my student is seeing. So if I zoom in and out, that will sync for the participant. If I expand the video views, that will expand as well. And if I switch boards, that will also sync. If I switch boards, and go into a private board while I am using leader mode, my participant will still remain on the original board that is visible to them, but they will receive a notification that they can't access the board that I'm currently on. In addition to all of these permissions, you can control who has access to your space in general. So if I click the share button at the top right corner, I can see everyone who is invited to my space and what their role is. So, you can see that Kiara is a participant, but if I want to make her a host, I can click the drop down, click host, and save. Now she'll have access to host permissions and will also be able to change any of the permissions related to participants. If I want to remove her from the space, I can click the drop down and click remove. Once that change is saved, she will be kicked out of the space and I would need to add her back in in order for her to rejoin. The other thing to note is public versus private visibility. If a space is public, it can be shared by a link. However, if you make a space private, it means that only the people who have accessed the space previously or the people that you invite via email will be able to join the space. So that is it for today's tutorial describing all of the ways that you can manage participants in Pencil Spaces. If you ever need support during your sessions, you can always click the help button at the top right corner and access our 24 seven chat support. Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more updates on all things at Pencil Spaces.